you guys, this is Mr. Millings, and today we're going to be talking about some radioactivity and radioactive particles in the nucleus of atoms. So hold on tight. Here we go. Let's take a look. Let's first talk about Einstein and E equals mc squared, the most famous equation in the whole wide world. According to Einstein's E equals mc squared, the energy that is locked in an object is equal to its mass times the speed of light squared. So what the heck does this mean, people? Well, this means that the mass that is in an object is nothing more than huge amounts of energy squeezed together, eventually forming mass. All right. So the mass that's in an object is nothing more than huge amounts of energy squeezed together, eventually forming mass. And if we work this process backwards, then what we can do is we can unlock insanely huge amounts of energy from the tiniest amounts of mass, uh, energy that is comparable to that of an atomic bomb. So E equals mc squared, people. Energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. And let's think about this real quick. The speed of light is the fastest thing in the universe. In fact, it's 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters every single second. And so if we square this really huge number, we're going to end up with a really big number, 9.0 times 10 to the 16th, right? Which is an insanely huge number. In fact, it's just a little bit less than the total number of grains of sand on every single beach on this planet. So it's a crazy huge number. So if we take this crazy huge number here by squaring the speed of light and multiply it by even the smallest amount of mass, we're going to take a really, really, really big number multiplied by a really small mass, and we're still going to end up with huge amounts of energy over here. All right, so e equals mc squared, and the uh, Einstein special relativity basically uh, means that energy and mass are one and the same thing in chemistry and physics. They're, they're the same thing. Energy and mass are identical, basically. That mass uh, is nothing more than huge amounts of energy squeezed together. And if we work this process backwards, we can take the mass of a pen cap, for example, and if we can somehow figure out a way to do so, we can unlock huge, insanely huge amounts of energy from this little pen cap's atoms, comparable to that of this little atomic bomb right here. All right, so how does E equals mc squared in Einstein's special relativity theory apply to radioactivity and radioactive particles? and radioactive isotopes? Well, let's take a look. All right, so when we have a radioactive isotope, what ends up happening is that the nucleus is really unstable. For example, if we take a look at a uranium atom, a uranium atom has 92 protons. Uranium has got about 92 protons inside its nucleus, and it has about 146 neutrons inside of its nucleus. So there's a lot of these tiny little particles that are jam-packed in a super, super, super small amount of space. All right, the result is, is that that uranium atom is very unstable. Okay, so what ends up happening over time is that really unstable uh, nucleus of the uranium atom is going to start to convert some of its mass into energy, energy in the form of alpha particles, beta particles, or even gamma rays and other forms of, of radioactive uh, decay particles. Okay, So what ends up happening over time is that this nucleus's mass is being converted into energy in accordance with Einstein's E equals mc squared. And so what ends up happening over time is that this nucleus is going to change into a totally different nucleus. It might change into something lighter than that of the uranium atom we started with because its mass is being converted into different forms of energy. Alpha particles, beta particles, these super high energy gamma rays right here. All right, so what are, and that's what radioactivity means. It means that the nucleus over time is being converted, some of its mass is being converted into energy. And so what are some radioactive particles that can be emitted from unstable radioactive nuclei? Well, you've got alpha particles. Alpha particles um, have symbols that might look like this right here. Okay, and these guys typically can be stopped by a sheet of paper. Then there's beta particles. Here are the symbols that we use to describe uh, beta particles. And these guys here can probably be stopped by a, uh, a layer of clothing. The nuclei of radioactive isotopes can also emit little gamma rays. These guys have a symbol that look like this right here, this Greek letter of the alphabet right here. Gamma, mass number of zero, and atomic number of zero as well. And these guys are super high energy forms of electromagnetic radiation. And these guys, it's going to take several, uh, several feet of concrete to stop these guys from passing through them. Then uh, radioactive uh, nuclei can also emit 
positrons, which is basically the same thing as a beta particle with a positive charge. And last but not least, they can emit these little neutrons here, which are also very highly penetrating. All right, so understand the idea of radioactivity, radioactive isotopes, and radioactive particles, and understand that radioactivity is happening because of Einstein's E equals mc squared. Let's take a look now at some of the penetrating powers of these different radioactive particles. Okay, so if we take a look at some of the penetrating powers of some of the more common radioactive particles that we see right here, we can see that alpha particles, uh, looks like a thin sheet of paper is going to be able to deflect these. They're not going to pass through a, a thin sheet of paper. If we take a look at beta particles, these are going to pass through the uh, thin sheet of paper here, but a thin sheet of aluminum foil is going to deflect them and keep them from passing through. And if we take a look at these gamma rays right here, these are super high frequency, super high energy forms of electromagnetic radiation. They're going to work their way through the paper. They're going to work their way through the aluminum. In fact, they might even work their way through uh, the skin and cause damage to some of our cellular tissues uh, due to their ionizing uh, properties, which means that they have a tendency to strip electrons off different atoms. And so it's going to take several, uh, you know, several centimeters or inches of this lead here to stop the gamma rays from passing through. All right, so understand that alpha particles have the lowest penetrating power of the three most common radioactive particles, and gamma rays are the most penetrating. All right, so let's take a look at alpha particles and beta particles and gamma rays and talk a little bit about each one of those. All right, so one type of radioactive particle that can be emitted from a radioactive nucleus nucleus or nuclei sorry is going to be an alpha particle right so these little radioactive uh, isotopes can emit alpha particles and an alpha particle is basically the same thing as a helium uh, nucleus right it's got two protons and two uh, electrons I'm sorry two neutrons essentially and so these guys will typically be symbolized like this right here you'll see them oftentimes written in a nuclear equation like this or you might even see them written like this these are going to be the same thing so an alpha particle is a particle emitted by the nucleus of radioactive isotopes that consist of two protons two neutrons bound together bound together and they're pretty much identical to that of a helium nucleus and uh, the production of these alpha particles is known as alpha decay and so right over here we have an old image an old archived image of a a physicist from back in the day observing the alpha particles from the decay of a, a polonium source in a cloud chamber just a cool picture that uh, you guys can pause and take a look at let's take a look at beta particles next okay so beta particles are high energy high speed electrons or positrons that are emitted by certain types of radioactive nuclei the production of beta particles is known as beta decay so for example we have a radioactive isotope here of some sort of element and it looks like it's emitting some beta particle or a beta particle right here and a beta particle is essentially an electron okay and uh, if you ended up with a a, a, a positive charge then you're gonna have a positron but here uh, this little guy right here is simply an electron over here this would be like a positron here and so if we take a look at this picture right here it looks like we have some glowing blue radiation caused by the uh, high-speed beta particles and them emitting this this bluish or this blue light right here okay let's look at a third or the third most common type of radioactive particle all right the third most common radioactive uh, Decay particle is actually, uh, it's called a gamma ray. It's a form of electromagnetic radiation, right? And we'll talk about electromagnetic radiation in another video. However, understand that electromagnetic radiation consists of photons, little packets of energy, right? Little bundles of energy. And so if we take a look at the nucleus of this radioactive isotope, it's emitting some gamma rays. And so what you need to know about electromagnetic radiation is that it, it is a particle, right? but it also has a tendency to travel in waves. And so this right here is an example of a gamma ray. These are super high frequency, super high energy forms of electromagnetic radiation that have uh, extremely high penetrating power. And these guys are also uh, ionizing in nature, meaning that uh, if, they, if they get if they pass through the skin in a human being, they can start to strip electrons off of our cellular tissue 
and cause some uh, damage along the way. And if we take a look at this atomic bomb here, there's some definitely some gamma rays being emitted during the nuclear fission in this little nuclear explosion right here. Okay, so those are radioactive particles. Uh, that's uh, radioactive decay and uh, radioactivity and that's E equals MC squared in a nutshell. If you like what you see go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right hand corner and that will subscribe you to my channel. Also feel free to leave any comments down in the comments section down below or if you have any questions go ahead and leave those down there as well and I hope you guys found this helpful.